welcome to ET Garage. I'm Eugene Tordo, and today's video is going to be about this uh, electric jack for a car. 12 volt lighter powered max lift range is 42 centimeters. It's supposed to be a three ton jack. I got this from Vivor, I think it's pronounced, for like 68 and change. I went online today and it's like, I guess it went up, it's like $72 or something. But I'll leave a link and I'm sure the price will change. But anyway, that's what this is going to be about, and I'm going to compare it to my two other jacks that I use uh, for people who can't afford a lift or just don't have the room for a lift. And I always wanted to try one of these 12 volt scissor lifts. I'm not a big fan of scissor lifts. I've used uh, manual ones before, and uh, I've had some issues with them. Uh, but uh, I figured I'll try this 12 volt uh, and make for a good video, or whatever. And I hope it makes for a good video. Okay. Thanks for a good video, and we learn a lot from it, and uh, so you, then you can decide whether you want to buy one or not, or if it will serve your needs. So, anyway, let me move the camera around, and uh, in the meantime, I want to thank everybody that subscribed so far. If you haven't, go down there and subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. And now we'll take a look at this. Okay, here it is. Comes in this really nice case. And as you can see, it says electric jack for car, 12 volt lighter powered. Of course, it's Chinese. And on the back side, it has that uh, reflective triangle, I guess, if you're stuck on the side of the road. Open it up, and uh, here it is. It's pretty nice. Comes with a pair of gloves if you want to use them. Instructions. Uh, of course, the jack wrapped in a plastic bag. It comes with this handle, telescoping handle. This is a pretty nice handle. Uh, I don't know how well it would work on the side of the road. You always want the longest handle possible if you get stuck on a. We're going to use this on the side of the road. And it comes with uh, this puck and this puck for, I guess, if you have like a higher vehicle and you need that extra lift. So. Uh, Let's see what else comes with this cord and uh, 12 volt power cord and it looks like a little miniature walkie talkie or uh, remote. I get kind of a kick out of this so I'm not sure how exactly this is supposed to work but uh, I guess we'll be finding out uh, here shortly. Let's get this out of the bag and see what this looks like. Seems to be really well made. This thing does have a lot of weight, so if you're storing it in a car, like say my 90 Corvette where it's a hatchback and the uh, storage area in the back is open to the driver and passenger, I'd be a little leery about something having something heavy like this back there. I mean, if you jam on the brakes for an emergency stop and this sucker comes flying forward, uh, it could do some serious damage. Uh, yeah, I have to say this looks really nice made. Uh, think, the one thing I don't like about scissor jacks is, or any jack really you have to be careful with, is uh, you have to be perfectly... You want the um, perfectly level and flat ground. Now, if you're using it to change a tire on the side of a road, uh, anyone who's done that knows how hard and impossible that is to do. Uh, what can happen is if the vehicle's cantered off a little bit or the jack's off a little bit, this thing could actually structurally collapse. This is heavier built than other ones that I've used, though. I have to say that, or, or manual ones that I've used. I never used an electric-powered one before. But... Uh, Taking a look at it, it's well built. Like I said, it has these puck, different pucks. It has this little plastic handle. I'm guessing I'm going to have to look at the directions and see what that's for. And it comes with these two sockets. Uh, let me see. One is uh, 19 millimeter on one end and 17 millimeter on the other end. These are some pretty heavy duty sockets, I'll say that. At least they feel it. And this one's 21 millimeter and 23 millimeter. Now, if you have a Corvette like mine that's three quarter inch, I'm not sure what the equivalent. Of millimeters if, if this is the any either of these are equivalent of a three-quarter inch but i guess i'll find out uh 
I, I doubt I'm going to use this wrench or those for what I'm going to use this for. I'm going to doubt I'm going to use these sockets or this wrench here, that telescopic wrench. And uh, power cord does have 12 volt power supply. And then it has this. And so you can plug your hook it directly to the battery, which I think I would like better, especially if you have an old car like my Corvette. I would rather hook this to the battery than this to the cigarette lighter because God knows how old that wiring is in there. Uh, you'll probably end up blowing a fuse or something. This puts too much of a load. And I'm trying, if I stop dropping stuff, trying to find out where the power cord plugs into on this. I guess I'll have to read the directions and we'll find out. Be back in a second. Okay, uh, I figured out where this power cord goes. It actually just goes right onto the end of here, like this. Uh, for some reason, I thought this would plug in. It seems waterproof, too, which is nice. But for some reason, I thought this would plug directly into the unit, but it doesn't. It plugs right into the cord that comes out of the motor. And then, uh, you have, like I said, you have that remote. And... I have a 12 volt power supply. I'm not sure if this is going to be sufficient. This power, this power supply here, if this is going to be sufficient enough to power this. This is really, I used to use this for model railroading years ago, but I'm going to plug it in and give it a try here. Let's see what happens. Now there's a little light on there that comes on. You can see that. And there's also three fuses that come with this, too. So I don't know if that's an indication of this thing blowing fuses or not. But, uh, yeah, it goes up. I don't know how it's going to do when I put a load on it. It's supposed to be able to handle three tons. The instructions that come with this are pretty vague. As you can hear, it's a little bit noisy. And then it has a uh, contact switch down here, too. I don't know if you can see that. I guess when it goes down, it stops it from going any further. Yep, that turns it off. So, uh, it does work. How much it'll lift, though, I guess we'll have to get out to the garage and find that out. Now, uh, I still need to try this remote here. Let's see if I can get this sucker off. The way they got this sucker on here. All right. Getting this remote off might be a little bit of a challenge the way they got it on here. I don't know what they were thinking when they stuck it on there, but oh, there it comes. And uh, not sure. There's no like. Oh, there we go. Apparently, you just press it once and it goes down. If you press it once, it goes up and has a stop button. Hmm. One thing I like about this is these chucks here have a, uh, this groove in it for grabbing the frame reel this way and that way, which is nice. And this one here, this is pretty heavy duty, this one here. And it screws in. For good reason, I guess, for stability, because you definitely don't want this thing shaking around when you're jacking, say, an SUV or a truck up. Now, there is one thing that I'm concerned about on this, and that is... The height of this. Now, uh, with this chuck on there, or this uh, puck, distance from here to there that may not fit like say under my c4 corvette will fit under uh, most average cars though my c4 corvette my c4 corvette isn't lowered i'm not sure this will clear that frame rail we'll have to find out when i get out there right now i have the car still on jack stands from when i did the oil change on the front up so uh i'll get out there uh it's gonna be cold out there of course and uh 
we'll give this thing a try and then I'm going to show you two other jacks that I use and we'll go over those too okay I'm out here in the garage where it's a nice toasty 24 or 5 degrees or somewhere around there Fahrenheit and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, jack out and set up and uh, I'll then relocate the camera so you get a better view and as you can see I already have it up in the air from when I uh, did my oil change and I want to get it off the jack stands because I want to move it so uh, we'll use it to take it down first and uh, get it off the jack stands and then we'll go ahead and jack it up completely without as far as we can without the jack stands under it where it's sitting on the ground its whole weight and all that stuff see how it does so uh, let me move the camera and we'll see what we can do okay I got it underneath the car here I hope everybody could see that good uh, and uh, got it lined up pretty good I got it on this board my uh, garage floors in uh, bad need of repair so if yours is like mine or on an even service or working outside you know try and put something down to support it better than just a rocky surface so uh, let's get this thing up and see if it'll reach one thing uh, I like is this indicator light it lets you know that you're plugged in Okay, I think it's just about fully extended and hasn't gotten the weight off my jack yet. Let's it down. Now it looks like there's uh, some grease on here. But the, it looks like they put it all up here. And not back where it's needed. So I'm going to add a little grease to that. Something you might want to consider when you use this. I'm just going to use a synthetic grease. I like it. the grease I'm using works good in uh, cold weather. Um, I'm going to put a little dab on there. Don't want to use a thick grease, that's for sure. There, that'll be better, I think. Spray on uh, lithium grease might even be better, but here we go.
try to switch to the remote because you want to sit there and hold the button. There it is all the way down. Uh, now I'm going to relocate the jack to this so I can lift up the whole side of the C4. Now keep in mind, my C4 right now is sitting a little high because I just took it off jack stands. Uh, that being said, if you have a lowered C4 or with the suspension settled to where it normally is, this may have a hard time fitting under there. So let's relocate this to a... Uh, better position where I can lift up the whole side of the C4 and we'll see how it does. Okay, I have uh, the jack position. I'm going to use the remote for this and I'm going to jack it up and I'm going to jack up the whole side of the vehicle. See if it will lift the whole side of the vehicle. I'll see how well it does. Uh, if you jack a vehicle like this, make sure you know what you're doing as far as like the frame rail position on a C4 Corvette, like for instance, like this here. You have specific positions where you need to put the jack pucks. Most cars are like that. Uh, so you have to make sure you do that. If you're doing it like I'm doing it now, uh, just, just make sure you're grabbing the frame rail at the pinch point. Uh, Maybe I'll go into more on that in another video. I'm not going to totally put this jack on jack stance today. I'm just going to jack the vehicle and lower it. I need to move it out for the weekend and uh, one day this weekend so I can get my other vehicle in here and do some other things. And I might take a road trip with this on uh, Sunday if the weather's nice to a uh, cars and uh, coffee. But anyway, I got a position under there. Let's uh, jack it up. Okay, this is having difficulty. It's doing it, but it has difficulty. Hmm. I also don't have this jack centered right. So let me lower it and start over again. The reason I know I don't have it centered right, the front wheel is coming off the ground. This is uneven, so the front wheel is going to come off the ground anyway before the rear. But it should go back a little bit. So let me lower it. See if this motor's getting hot. Yeah, the motor ain't getting hot.
Okay, the whole car is off the ground. Hopefully you can see that. And uh, it did it. It strained. For something that's supposed to be rated for three tons, you wouldn't think it would uh, strain that much. I mean, uh, this car weighs, uh, according to the books, and I'm guessing this is the dry weight. I'm not sure if it's the dry or wet weight. It is 3,380 pounds, a ton being 2,000 pounds. So this is less than a ton and a half, the entire weight of the car. And right now it's it's lifting uh, half of it, basically. So uh, if you were to put a three full three tons on there, I, I'd expect to blow a fuse or burn the motor. I will say the motor didn't even get warm. Of course, it's like I said, it's like 24 degrees Fahrenheit out here. Uh, I'm not going to go full lift on it. I think it lifts up to about 15 inches, which is pretty good for getting it up on jack stands. And uh, depending where you're at, you should always chalk your wheels. I, I think I forgot to mention that. Always chalk your wheels. But uh, Let's get this down, and then I'll compare it to uh, two other jacks I use uh, and uh, how I use them. You know what? I'm going to leave it right there. And I'll get the jack set up next to it and uh, hope for the best. So just hold on a second. I'll rearrange the camera and get the other jacks and I'll show you the difference in those jacks. Okay, these are the other two jacks that I'm going to compare this to. I will say right now, this jack here is my favorite. Uh, this jack here is fantastic and what's fantastic about it is all the load is vertical it has this plate uh, it'd be really hard to tip this jack over and it's a combination jack and uh, jack stand which is really nice and you can adjust this height that way before you start to jack and uh, it has this, which locks it. Let's see, it's a little bit cold, so it may not work like it's supposed to. There it goes. So it locks it. And uh, I'll see if I can get it to lower. It's so cold, it probably won't go down by itself. But yeah, I didn't get it up high enough. But it'll lock and keep it from coming down, which is you know a good safety device. So. Uh, There it goes. Let's see if we can get that sucker down now. But it locks pretty much what you know what I'm saying. And there it goes. It just locked in that position. So, uh, which makes it really nice. And uh, there's one bad thing about this jack. Uh, it will not fit under the C4. It will, if I use a jack like this uh, floor jack here jack it up with this then slide it under just like a jack stand and use it that way and that's usually what i do with this this is still my that being said i still prefer this jack here uh it's just easier to jack up and it's a lot more sturdier than something like that or this and getting to this, this is a floor jack this is an aluminum pittsburgh one it's only a one and a half ton um if you buy one of these spring extra for a three ton uh I have no problem jacking this car up with that. Uh, it does take a little bit more effort than a three-ton would. And uh, that being said, this one and a half ton, pumping it manually feels like it has more power than what that sounds like when this is jacking this car up. Uh, this is nice because it's aluminum, and so it's fairly lightweight. Um, and every now and then I do have to uh, bleed it, re-bleed it and uh, check the fluid in it doesn't seem like it's leaking any. it just seems like it gets air in it from moving it around on a rough floor like this it's hard to use and uh one thing when you jack one of these things up you have to have a, a smooth surface for it to roll on because as you jack it up like right now it ain't doing anything but when you jack it up under the car and the weights on here it pulls it forward so you need a smooth surface uh for it to smoothly roll forward and uh that's another reason you never want to get in a car with one of these without 
first putting on uh, jack stands. Always use jack stands. Good uh, jack stands. I have the Harbor Freight ones. You got to be careful with them. A bunch of them are recalled. Mine are not the recalled ones. Um, but the, that's uh, basically all I'm going to go over for this video. If you use any of these jacks, chalk your wheels. Um, chalk your wheels. Or at least apply the parking brake. And, uh, of course, if you're going to be jacking the back of the car, you definitely want to use, uh, definitely want to use, uh, wheel chocks. Like if I was back in it, uh, or, or make sure it's in gear. If it's front wheel drive, you can make sure it's in gear. If it's a manual, you still want to chalk the wheels. I have a bad habit of not doing it. I always just rely on the, uh, the parking brake a lot of times. So I shouldn't do that, but, I mean, you shouldn't do it either. But I'm going to, uh, uh this is I'm gonna give this a uh, scale of one to ten. I think I'll give it a uh, seven. And you know, and I'm gonna say I like everything about it except for the power. It doesn't seem like it has enough power, in my opinion, to be rated right three tons. I'd love to get this under a uh, something heavy where you and put a full three tons on this and see what happens. I'm also not sure about how long this will last. This is just really made for you know, when you're stuck on the side of the road it's not really made for repeated use like say this floor jack is or a jack like this where you're doing maintenance on vehicles that's really not made for that that's really made for a roadside assistance type of deal uh i am going to be using it uh i don't jack up vehicles too too often not if i don't have to i'm getting too old and keep sliding under here i do have to get under here to finish the uh, some of the projects that I want to get done, I want to put old stainless steel brake lines in this. And when I say stainless steel, I'm not talking about the hoses. I'm talking about the metal lines that run to the ABS and all that. And I want to put that KC4 oil cooler in here yet. So I will definitely be getting this up as high as I can on jack stands. And I'll probably use that to do it. Uh, because I hate jacking. Yeah, I hate, I hate putting any vehicle up on jack stands. Uh, C4, I think, is the worst probably. But anyway, I'm going to end this video here, and uh, I hope it was helpful. I hope the review of that Vivor uh, three-ton scissor jack was helpful. Um, no matter what jack you use, be careful. Everybody have a great day, and God bless.